Greg out here. Let's just let's just check this out. What's the time? 2.38. Righto. So let's see how long this takes. Yeah. Um, what's the story? So a few people have been asking me how long it would take, how hard is it to pull a motor out. I know in the Type 1 based low lights, it's about... 10 minutes <laughs> no not 10 minutes it's about 25 30 minutes if you know what you're doing if you haven't done it before it might take you 45 um they are a bit easier a bit quicker to pull out but um i haven't done a type 4 for quite a while now so let's um let's see how long it takes us i'm not going to rush it i'll just go through step by step um so the first thing we gonna do we're on a concrete a level floor but you should be able to do this just about anywhere but having said that you've got to be able to roll the trolley jack so this is just a two-ton trolley jack it's um apparently part aluminium and part steel so it's still fairly heavy but uh yeah it does the job so what we're gonna do is try and get the car body as high as possible so that's where you need some stands so these are our overspray covered these are our biggest stands so you can get even larger than this but we sh we're going to try and do the job with this notice i said try okay it's been been a while since i've taken one out so i wanted to be honest with the time andrew's knocked off work just so i can film this and um so let's get the car up on the stands first high as possible so get her under the you want to come around and yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there you go yeah move the trolley out of the way yeah so um so you want to be putting the jack underneath the chassis rails there where it's nice and strong um if all you've got is a factory jack that goes in the jacking point there i don't know whether you're actually going to get it high enough for to do the job it's all about sliding the motor out the back so we've got that on there is anything going to tip over is the handbrake on not that it matters because the wheel's going to be off the ground um if you feel your ground's not quite level you should actually chock Chop the wheels. So let's see how high we can get this. I'll go max height with this jack. I should have run through what tools we'll need for this job. Um, I think that's about it there. Maybe a little bit more. There we go, that's our height. I'll shove that in the V there. Drop that down. Right, go around the other side. Same here. And just make sure when you're doing this sort of jacking operation that you leave your wheels on. Um, I think in this whole job, I'm pretty certain that I have no reason to take the wheels off. So we'll just leave them on. It adds a little bit of safety. All right, I think we've got the same height there now. Now, it's pretty sturdy to me. So, um, well, we can leave the jack there for now. We won't need it for a little bit. So, um, now, that, now that I've jacked the car up, we probably could have done some of this top stuff first. But anyway, I'll show you some of the things that you might need. I'm not sure whether we need an eight, 
but it's good to have one there. I know you need an eight to undo the nut for the accelerator cable on type ones, but this is a bit different. We needed a, did we sit it in there? Oh, so a tiny little Allen head there. Um, I don't even know what size that is. It looks like four mil or something. Um, it's just handy having these bits that you can put in there and unscrew that. Um, I think we'll definitely need a 10, 13, flat head, Phillips head, and a 17. Not sure if we need a 15, but let's just let's just wing it and see how we're going. Um, I was just thinking, yeah, you, like I've, I know I've just put that car up. See, I wanted to keep this as real as possible. So, I can sort of reach over here anyway. So what we want to do is remove this air cleaner assembly. Should I, should I just be deep? Oh no, actually this is going to be a good height. Yeah, that's actually going to be a good height. It's just when you're working over the top. So I'm going to take the, uh... Andrew, you can talk, okay? Well, Andrew's just suggested, he said, why don't you get inside and do it from, yes, good idea. Will the car collapse? Let's find out. Oh no! Move that engine lid out of the way. So let's see if we can take a couple of these off. Definitely need the flat head here. This is just like a breather hose. That, Goes to the top of the air cleaner. So it'll just be a bit of twisting. If you can't um, twist it off, like you could leave this air cleaner on. Oh, hang on, hang on. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Hang on, hang on. Don't touch <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit of sniffles going on. First thing, first thing on this job is to disconnect your battery, right? You don't want to be mucking around with anything on the motor. Um, this one, because it's in for a restoration, um, the battery's already disconnected, so you've got your, what's this one? See how that's attached to the motor? That's obviously a negative. It's also earth to the body. And the other one, here would be on the positive so um so you might as well take both of them off so they're disconnected you don't have to pull the battery out but disconnect them first that way when you're playing with the wiring in here you're not gonna short anything out there's a very slim chance of that anyway um yeah so because we've got a few wires to disconnect from from the motor itself so let's start with doing that all right, and we'll get to the fuel section later because we need to disconnect the fuel from where the fuel lines come into the back of the motor and make sure we plug the hose there. If you can do this job with the tank empty, it's even better, but um, I think there's a little bit of fuel in this one. We were driving it around, so. And the reason for, well, we've got to pull the motor out to tidy up the engine bay anyway. We might as well put a bit of paint in there but when you look at the repairs here, the rust repairs, this has had the outer skin taken off and, and Andrew's like, no, nah, I, I need that motor out of the way so I can repair it properly. I'm like, right, oh, well, it's gonna make it a nicer job anyway to do the engine bay while we've got it out. And we'll probably do all the breather hoses and everything, everything fuel related, so. Okay, so we've disconnected the terminals off the battery now let's have a look at you're going to have random hoses like this that are breathers for the top of the carby there so we can just put that to the side um this piece here that just pulled straight off the carby there's normally a clip on the side i'm not 100 percent sure where the clip has gone for it. So that, that is something we'll have to look into when the motor's gone. There should be a, a clip.
clip it as part of the arrangement there. You can see down the carby there, it actually still looks pretty clean. Um, definitely a good idea to put something over there so nothing drops into there. Um, we might even use these rubber gloves. That will stop any random bolts or whatever going down there. I'll do one on the other side. So this one's not clipped on either, but we'll look into that. So we can pull that out. So normally there's a clip to undo. The clip goes on top of this part here. Um, like when it's sitting there, the clip goes over the top. And then you just push that off so you can remove those separately. Um, now, in order to lift this uh, box out, I'll, I'll put this other one in here. I actually had these gloves to put on my hands, but I'll, we'll get to that when we get into the greasy bit. So let's just cover that over for good measure. Nothing drops in there. All right, you can use a rag or tape over it or whatever you want. So now let's have a look at um, the accelerator cable. So here's your cable from the front of the car and that goes into this housing here and the housing is all um, yeah so that pulls that hang on this way it twists that and basically opens up the carburetors um, so what we have to do is undo this screw here it's a little grub screw there and that that's the only thing got that yep so um, that's the only thing now watch what happens when I undo that. That cable should just pop out. Oh, there she goes. Pull that out. Well. Right, so we'll keep that. So that cable's out. So now let's see what we can do about getting this air cleaner box out. So you'll see on the bottom here, yeah, if you want to come in there maybe. You can see in here, there's a big clip on the bottom here. So unclip that. And yes, there's one on the other side too. A bit dark, let's see. Go. So let's see if we can pull this out. I don't think I've missed anything too much. Now this, this tube here, this tube was connected to an old uh, um, this this car had a Access couple of scoops the on the side previously, and, and they had this tube straight off. off on the scoop so it was like and a ram air system i so would be replacing that up, say. It's and just cut the metal inside. out and replace it with that is that's clean sheet yeah, metal that's ready for now um, let's have a quick look at this air filter so if you ever got to replace the air filter you just look at that yeah that's some um definitely due for a new filter but as far as Putting a new one on, I might as well tell you while I'm here, it, this whole bottom section can stay clipped into this, these uh, brackets here. And all you gotta do is un unclip the two things at the top. Uh, how many are there? One, two, three things at the top. Four, yeah. And then, um, and then just put the new filter in and sit the top back on and then clip it back on. So changing an air filter is like, one minute tops. So let's just get this out of the road. Um, so now we've got access to, you can see everything as far as your fuel lines. You can see where this fuel line's going through here. This is a bit of a no-no. We'll, we'll have to do something about this, where this fuel line is going through a sharp metal edge there. Um, and that shouldn't be, if you've got a bit of movement there, that fuel line can shape, chafe against there and uh, end up rupturing. 
and that's what causes fires. So you want your um, fuel hose to be going through a rubber bung. Even as I've done in a car, um, if the hole's big enough, or you make the hole big enough, and then where it goes through, you put some garden hose around it. And can never, it can never chafe then. Chafe. So we've disconnected that. So let's have a look back around here. Let's have a look in through here now. Oh, everything's so stiff on this car. So we've got a, a spring here. That was actually, that's pulling on this throttle. It's, it's a uh, accelerator doesn't stay open. It returns it to close. So we can just release that. All that can actually stay there on the motor um, because the motor just gets lowered down and that can all be, all be left intact. So this had a second battery. So there's obviously gonna be a little bit of wire, extra wiring for that. So it's a matter of tucking that out of the way. But you can see here is a fuse. Um, uh, was a fuse. <laughs> so this is to do, um, I'm pretty sure that we had a, yeah, so it's one of the old school metal fuses, I think. Don't have any glasses on, but it looks all right still. Um, I'm pretty sure this is to do with the reverse lights because we had troubles uh, on a customer's car when we put it all back together and the reverse lights weren't working. It just turned out to be this wasn't connected. So, okay, we've got to look at what is an external wire for the, um, what's external to the motor and what's all joined together. So you want to work out that. So, um, this has all been cable tied out of the way, but what I'll do is I'll snip the cable ties. Because we wanna, we wanna be able to see where, don't snip through the wires, just the cable tie only. Like so, and on here. Righto, so let's have a look at what belongs to the car. So what do we got here? We've got one wire here that's attached to the fuel cutoff solenoid on the side of the carby. All right, that's this one here. So this one will disconnect from there because that's part of the, the main loom. And you can see the a short wire, you know it's gonna go to the carby because of where it is. So that's okay there. So now we need to work out um, what the other wires are. So you've got one down to here, you might be able to show above. There's an oil pressure switch. That's this one here. So I'm gonna pull it off and see, have a look at that. So what I'm going to do to save confusion down the track is I'm gonna label it. Only we had a good permanent marker. Oh. Do you want to get me one? Do you know where one is? Now I know there's guys out there this that know exactly what colour wire goes where. I'm not one of those guys, okay? I'm happy to admit. Um, wiring's not my strong point. We can put them, pull these out and put them back together and everything can work, but uh, um, a friendly reminder, oil P I'll put. So that's our, that's for our oil pressure. All right, so that's part of the, the main loom there. That, that signal goes from the oil sender to the front of the car, the light on the dash. Right, so what else is part of this loom here? So we've got this one here. So that's a negative. Um, that's black there. So this one's got electronic ignition, so you've got the two, a black and a red wire. 
So this one was attached to the negative of the coil. Um, I'm wondering whether this car had a taco at one stage. I don't think they normally need a negative. They need a positive to the coil to power the coil. And that's what ugh, another cable tie. Sometimes you just got to go in and snippy snippy. All right, so you got to separate these wires. So you got to trace that wire. So this one here is the positive, positive of the coil. So let's pull that off. All right. So I'm guessing that I'm pretty sure that a taco um, needs a negative to the coil for the signal. So I'm going to say that that's what it is. But I'm just going to put negative coil on it. And of course the dash isn't in anymore, so I couldn't even tell you, it's been, been a long time. Um, what did I say? Negative. Neg. Coil. I'll just put C. Because the main harness is, um, yeah, so this has got other wires that's all to do with your carby, but unfortunately they've strapped the whole lot together with um, clips and all sorts of things um, when it should or actually be separate. Um, so, and this one was positive on the coil. So that's the one that's feeding power to the coil. When you switch ignition on at the front of the car, that comes on. So I'm just gonna put positive plus coil. Right, okay, that's that. So how many more cable ties have we got to bloody remove? So the other positive from the coil here is a red lead and that goes right round and ends up in separate from the loom. Separate from the loom, so does that go to the front? Yeah, yeah it's okay. gone. Well, see, this is the thing you have. I'm pretty sure that standard from the factory, it didn't have that many wires, but all of these are going to the the positive of the coil. So I'm just going to mark them as such. Um, this one is piggybacked. So, you know, the the true experts, because that's I'm not one of those. Um, I'm just going to put plus because they all go to the plus C and this one same you just want to have it so that the motor can drop down without um, you pulling on wires and ripping it all out so I'm sure some of these things are extras and that's what happens over time people add electrical stuff and you've just got to sort where it all goes okay we're getting there so there's that um what do we got here see uh, as soon as you add uh trailer wiring you know you got extra wires for that that normally aren't there and it's just a matter of that that's tucked in through there so that that shouldn't matter so this this loom can be pushed out of the way now now we've got to get to um uh, what are we going to do next? Disconnect the fuel. So this accelerator cable here, there's enough, um, there's enough free play in that at the back of it that the you'll be able to drop the motor down and it won't snag on the on the cable. So, so let's have a look now. Yeah, that's just the negative of the the earth yeah, bolt. But that can just stay there. Oh well, take that one. Oh yeah, yeah. So, as Eagle Eye Andrew has just pointed out, this um, negative is clamped to the top of the motor as well. See, this is only a really 
El Cheapo screwdriver, but you can still do the job. It shouldn't be that tight that it, you, you know, you don't need to strap on stuff. So, um, all right, we just had a, a minor technicality problem with the GoPro. So we've switched to the phone now. It's the GoPro has gotten, gotten hot. It is a warmish day for sure, but I didn't expect it to stop so soon. So, so back to the phone, we're hoping this works all right. Um, so you've seen how we've disconnected all the electrical. Uh, now it's time to disconnect the fuel. So this is the tricky part. It can be a tricky part depending on how much you got in the tank. I've got no idea, can you remember? We're hoping that the tank, that a lot of the fuel has evaporated out of the tank because this has been here for quite a while. So, um, so what you need to do is get an empty jerry can, preferably. This can get, uh, it doesn't have to get messy, but it, it can. So oh, I was gonna try and just block the fuel line. So I've got a, a nice long screw there that I can shove in the fuel line. Now I'm just thinking of the size of this, it might be a tad too big. Um, and that would be a disaster because you'd be there trying to screw it in and you'd be getting covered in fuel. So let's have a look at a smaller size. Yeah, so. got a smaller size as well that's an m6 and that's an m8 so let's see which one's going to work like i said i was going to keep this uh keep this as real as possible including my hay fever nose um so yeah right we've got to go underneath now now another thing i noticed here before was this has got an oil temperature sender They've used some sort of uh, elastic to hold the wire along the motor. It's actually done the job pretty well because it was tucked away nicely. But we'll pull this off so that's not in the road. Um, as you can tell with this one, it's got the bare naked heater boxes here. The outer shells have been rusted off or stripped off or something. So the heating system on this would be no good because all the heat, well, it's not being trapped and it's not being, yeah taken where it needs to go so um, let's go we've got this light here so what we need to do is try and catch the fuel directly out of the tank um, so what they've got here is a cheap oh that that looks terrible so this shows you how old the fuel is the car's been here for a long time um, yeah that looks like varnish so she was starting to run a bit rough when we were driving it around the yard to move it. Um, and that sort of explains it. So, um, I'm aiming to, they've got this fuel filter here. I'm looking at this hose here. I don't know whether you can see it. That looks awfully wet. That's, that, that's been looped up over there. There's, sharp, there's a sharp metal edge there. It's starting to drip. It's starting to leak, wow, okay. Oh. Um, so I'm going to have to evacuate this hose as quickly as it goes straight on the light. So what I'm going to do is, is grab a jerry can. I'm going to have to let that leak for a sec. And I'm going to undo the hose here at the bottom of this filter. This whole filter's definitely got to be replaced. And that, that hose is seeping. That's what causes fires. We don't want a fire. 